transfer between circular coplanar orbits only requires that the transfer orbit intersect both orbits. In the case of a Hohmann transfer, the transfer ellipses are tangent to both of the circular orbits at its perigee and apogee points. In a general case where the transfer ellipse intersects the orbits at points other than its perigee or apogee, we can call this a non Hohmann maneuver. A Hohmann transfer is preferred because it is the optimum two-impulse transfer path between two coplanar circular orbits. What if, for example, the intersection of the transfer orbit is not on the perigee or apogee, but at some other points on the ellipse? We take a look at this general non-Hohmann transfer here. Suppose at point 1, the spacecraft fires its engine to get into the transfer trajectory towards its destination orbit. And at point 2, on the transfer ellipse, it fires its engine once again to get into the desired final orbit. How do we calculate the total delta V needed? At point 1, delta V1 is the difference between the initial circular orbit velocity, Vc sub 1, and the orbital velocity at point 1 of the transfer ellipse, Ve sub 1. And at point 2, delta V2 is the difference between the final circular orbital velocity, Vc sub 2, and the orbital velocity of point 2 of the transfer ellipse, Ve sub 2. Let's analyze these delta Vs one by one. At point 1, the spacecraft needs to speed up to match its velocity with the orbital velocity at that point, which can be easily found using the vis viva equation. We should also note that the spacecraft has to also adjust its flight path angle to get into the transfer ellipse trajectory, which means the spacecraft not only has to change the velocity magnitude but also its direction. Using the law of cosines, delta V1 therefore can be expressed as follows. The velocity change required at point 2 can be computed in a similar fashion, like what we've done in point 1. The total delta V for the two-impulse non-Hohmann maneuver can be generalized as follows. 